It was in reggae music that I thought that I found the perfect marriage of using the drug of my choice and a music that quoted from the Bible, which is what my parents were always having me read. Mark Moore is the lead vocalist and founder of the Christian reggae band Christafari. Reggae music is inherently spiritual. Unlike so many other musics, it, they quote scripture all the time. Obviously, they misquote scripture, <laughs> but they, they basically say that it's okay to smoke marijuana, and you do that in order to get close to God, or Jah as they call him. Mark grew up just south of LA in the 1980s, where he says he was a classic California stoner. My early preteens and in my teenage years, I became a real rebel. It started off with marijuana, and then escalated to cocaine, eventually to crack, to crystal meth. I was growing marijuana in my parents' backyard. I was dealing marijuana. I was a messed up kid. His parents were Christians, but Mark says he couldn't relate to them. I guess I couldn't relate to the true joy that was inside of them because I didn't have that inside of me because I was using drugs. As I look back in my life, I realized that there's two crucial things that would cause someone to to do drugs or to, to stray away. And one is to trying to fit in. And in my case, I was trying to fit in with an older crowd. I was trying to be accepted. And the other is trying to escape. Their efforts to get Mark into a drug rehab program were unsuccessful and often led to intense confrontations. Once, Mark ran away for an entire summer. I started to find where the parties were and I would spend the night at the parties. And that was easy to do in the summer, <laughs> but not so easy after that. And sometimes I would wake up on the beach, I was basically homeless. Mark's parents eventually talked him into coming home. And they said, well, just come back home. We just need you back home. We want you to be safe. We want you to be healthy. And so I accepted their, their invitation and only under one pretext that every Wednesday I would sit right here in this living room and that they would have me read the Bible with them and share the word of God with me. When Mark was 16, he discovered his true passion during a family vacation. One year, I remember my parents came to me and said, you know, where do you think we should go? And of course, I said, Jamaica. My next door neighbor was Jamaican. Uh, and I loved marijuana. And I knew that Jamaica was well known for its high grade marijuana. But pot wasn't the only thing about Jamaica that fascinated Mark. And Jamaica was where I first got introduced to the Rasta culture and to reggae music. And it was in Jamaica that, that this bug started in me to do reggae music. And eventually I would start to write songs. Mark's drug use continued through high school. Then one summer, his parents talked him into going to a Christian camp in Northern California. There, he met a camp counselor named Marcus. One of the things that drew me to Marcus was we liked the same kind of music. We had the same past and we had so much in common. And so it was the commonalities that made me connect with him. And then one day I looked at him and I said, there's something different between you and I. What's the difference between you and I? And he looked at me with the love of Christ and he didn't give me a long sermon. He just said, that's the love of God. And it was then that I realized that he had something that I needed. He had something that I'd been searching for for all these years. He had hope in his life. He had a future. At that point, something in Mark broke. Right after Marcus said that it was the love of God, I heard a modern day rendition of the prodigal son. And this guy had done all the stuff that I had done. He had run away, he had done the drugs, yet his father accepted him with open arms. And I realized at that moment that not only had my earthly father accepted me with open arms, but my heavenly father had. And so I fell to my knees and I prayed the sinner's prayer with tears in my eyes. But this time it was gonna be different. I was gonna read the Bible every day and I was gonna just submerse myself in God's word and spend time with God every day. And that was the difference. When Mark got home from camp, he began inviting his friends to his house to study the Bible. He says his encounter with Marcus taught him to relate the gospel in a way they could understand. One of the coolest things about what Marcus said to me was that he didn't preach the gospel to me. He gave an answer because I asked a question and I wouldn't have asked the question if I didn't see a manifestation of Christ in him that drew me. Mark also credits the power of praying parents in his eventual turnaround. My parents never gave up on me. They were relentless. They pursued me in love and in discipline, united as a front. They came to me with the love and compassion of Christ. Later that year, Mark shared his testimony at another Christian camp. There, a casual remark by a worship team leader changed the course of his life. 
I asked the worship team at the, at the camp if they could back me and do some reggae. They said, we'll try. It was pretty embarrassing. But the bassist looked at me and said, so you're not a Rastafarian anymore, you're a Christafarian. And that was the beginning of Christafari. In my weakness, he's the greatest. Since then, Mark and his band Christafari have recorded 16 albums and won numerous awards. We've been to 46 states, 53 countries, played before the President of the United States, two Olympic Games, and our most recent album was number two on the Billboard charts. We've had some tremendous opportunities to reach Rastas and to see Rastas give their lives to Christ. During that time, Mark also met and married singer Avion Blackman, who sings and performs with him in Christ Afari. So the Lord has done some incredible things through a vision that he imparted in me at a simple youth camp, through a man just giving an answer to his faith. We're touring the world doing a music that we love with a wife that I love, for a Lord that I love, ministering to people that I love. That's a wild ride. It's an adventure following Christ. That's the best decision I ever made.